Hi, I'm Eddie Muller, welcoming you to another international edition of Noir Alley. Today's feature is Bob Le Flambeur, or Bob the Gambler, released in France in 1956. It's the first film I presented on Noir Alley by Jean-Pierre Melville, a writer and director recognized as the undisputed master of the French film noir. That reputation began with this film, his first in the crime genre. No European filmmaker, perhaps no filmmaker anywhere in the world, was more influenced by American culture than Jean-Pierre Melville. His characters may speak French, but they exist in a transatlantic noir netherworld that's a mixture of Gallic and American style. Born in Paris in 1917 as Jean-Pierre Grumbach, he adopted the codename Melville in honor of American writer Herman Melville while fighting for the French resistance during World War II. After the war, he was repeatedly refused admittance to the French equivalent of the Directors Guild. So Melville opted to make his movies completely outside France's established movie industry. He built his own studio where he lived and worked for his entire career. This fierce independence and his creative resourcefulness were a huge influence on the young film critics who'd soon gained notoriety as the French New Wave. Although much of Melville's attitude and technique inspired filmmakers like Jean-Luc Godard and Francois Truffaut, Melville was more a mentor to the movement, not a member of it. He was too much of an iconoclast to join any group, well, except the anti-fascist resistance. Melville had the idea for Bob Le Flambeur as early as 1950, but he put it aside after seeing The Asphalt Jungle. He knew he couldn't top John Huston's masterful heist picture and was frankly intimidated by its greatness. But that didn't deter another admirer of Huston's masterpiece. Auguste Le Breton, an orphan who literally grew up in the Parisian underworld, and who'd also fought with the resistance, was inspired by the asphalt jungle to write his own crime novel called Du Rififi Chez Léon. A few years later, Melville was scheduled to direct the film version, but he told the producers they should hire exiled American Jules Dassin instead. Dassin had been blacklisted in America for suspected communist affiliations. He was living in Europe, unable to get work. As a result of Melville's largesse, Dassin's directing career was revived. Rafifi won Dassin the Best Director Prize at the 1955 Cannes Film Festival, and it stands to this day as arguably the greatest heist film ever made. Bob Le Flambeur displays Melville's original distinctive take on a similar story, written in collaboration with Auguste Le Breton. The central character is Bob Montaigne, a one-time bank robber doing relative straight time as a professional gambler in the Montmartre district of Paris. He's the first of many Melville characters who is a prince among thieves, an outlaw who lives by nefarious means, but with his own strict code of honor and ethics. And to be honest, this is not a character on which Melville had the patent. It's a staple of French pop culture, embodied by such characters as Arsène Lupin and Pepe Lamoco, and popularized in movies of this era by actors Jean Gabin and Jean Servet. In this film, Melville is more interested in depicting the underworld milieu and the way Bob moves through it with grace and elan, even as a losing streak threatens to bankrupt his suave and stylish lifestyle. A rest assured, there is a heist being hatched, but Melville is in no hurry to move those pieces into place. He's more excited by ushering us through the Parisian demi monde and exploring the trust and betrayals of the men and women who live there. One of those women, actress Isabel Corey, received top billing in the credits, even though she'd never made a film before. Melville discovered her modeling in the Latin Quarter and thought he could make her into a star. Unfortunately, Bob Le Flambeur came out at the same time as another French film, And God Created Woman starring a similarly sexy gamine, Brigitte Bardot. Corey also appeared in the film. Bardot became an instant international sensation, while Corey's career lasted only a few more years. As for the film's true star, Roger Duchesne, he cuts a memorable figure, an aging man of taste and style who commands the respect of everyone in his orbit, 
including the police lieutenant determined to keep Bob on the straight and narrow. I'll have more to say about Duchenne's fascinating story after the movie. I trust you're all set with a fresh baguette, some good cheese, you've poured yourself a nice glass of Bordeaux. We are headed to the City of Lights, or at least the version of Paris that existed in the imagination of Jean-Pierre Melville. Here is Bob Laflambeur. 